Hi students, my name is Sanana. I'm here to teach you the subject of social science. Today we would be studying chapter 4 of geography, Indian soils. And what we do before we begin any chapter? We first will know what are all the topics that we would be learning. So first we will be learning about soil formation. Students, this is one of the easiest chapters in geography. So the topics that we would be learning in this chapter are meaning and importance of soil. Then we will learn about various types of soils. The moment we talk about types of soils, we should also know their characteristic features. Lastly, we will learn about the problem of soil erosion and how it can be resolved. The way we resolve it would be called soil conservation. So very easy, meaning and importance of soil. Types of soil and their characteristics, soil erosion, soil conservation. That's all. Let's begin. First with meaning and importance of soil. Soil is the thin. You see, compared to everything, that all the different layers of the earth's crust, soil is the thinnest layer. It's the thin surface layer of the earth comprising of, what is it made of? Closely intermixed minerals and organic substances. Two things, it has minerals and organic substances. By organic substances, we mean substances that have life. It could be decayed plant matter, it could be humus, it could be earthworms and so many other organic substances. For India, it is considered as a very important natural resource. Why you ask? Because Indian economy is an agriculture based economy and for agriculture what is the most important resource? Soil. Agricultural production is basically dependent on fertility or how good the soil is. Soil formation of India is mainly related to the parent rock. If you all ask me what is parent rock? The rock below the surface of the soil is called the parent rock. If the parent rock or the rock that breaks to form soil, if it has more iron content, then the soil will also have more iron content. If it has more magnesium, even the soil will have more magnesium. So the soil is directly dependent on the parent rock. So soil formation is dependent on parent rock, relief, climate and natural vegetation. It may get very confusing. We learned what are the factors on which monsoon is dependent on. Now we are learning factors on which soil formation is dependent on. A quick way to remember, parents of Rahul came for non-veg. Parents, parent rock, Rahul, relief, came, see, climate, envy, natural vegetation. A quick way for you to remember from exam point of view. So there are a wide range of soils in India. Now we will look at them. Types of soil in India are six main types. Alluvial, black, red, laterite, desert, mountain. If I were in your place, I would put some logic into this. Alluvial is mainly related to agriculture. So what is the opposite of agriculture? No agriculture at all. Desert. So alluvial desert. Black soil is a soil that holds a lot of water. So black and then red laterite mountain. Alluvial desert. Then we have black and red. These are based on colors. Then laterite and mountain. Now let's read in from map point of view. Very important. Which soils are found in which parts of India? Now we will learn each one of them. Alluvial soil. The soil that's composed of alluvium. Alluvium means the material brought by a river along its course are called alluvial soil. How are they formed? They are formed from the sediments or the material brought by rivers. Sediments deposited by rivers. Where are they found? In the Indo-Gangetic plain and by the sea waves in the coastal plain. They are very extensive and very important in India. Again, why important in India? Indian economy is based on agriculture. 
alluvial soil is the most suitable for agriculture. They contribute greatly to the development of agriculture in the country. They cover an area of 15 lakh kilometer square. The main crops grown on this kind of soil are wheat, paddy, sugarcane, cotton, jute, potato and vegetables. Now if you have to remember, just remember any three. Wheat, paddy, sugarcane, easiest. Wheat, you eat chapati every day. Paddy, you eat rice every day. You like to eat sweet, so sugarcane. What you do on everyday basis, what you eat on everyday basis is grown on alluvial soil. Wheat, paddy, sugarcane. What you wear also, alluvial soil only, cotton. But just remember wheat, paddy, sugarcane. Black soil. This soil is also known as rigar or regur soil. And black cotton soil. This soil is most important for the growth of cotton crop. That's why it is called itself as black cotton soil. Give reason, very important. Why is black soil called the black cotton soil? Because they are best suited for cotton cultivation. How are they derived? They are derived from basalt rock. Like how alluvial soil was brought down by the river sediments, this is formed by the basalt rock. What is basalt if you ask? So if there is a volcano. So in the Deccan Plateau of India, millions of years ago a lot of volcanoes took place. So one layer of volcanic eruption came, then another, then another and slowly they cooled down. So after they cooled down these rocks were called basalt and this black soil is formed from the basalt rock. What is their color? They have a dark grey, almost black color with high clay, high clay, so high capacity to retain water. They are highly retentive of moisture or water and extremely compact. They are best suited for cultivation of cotton, sugarcane, java, maize, pulses, wheat and chilies. Even if you remember only cotton, it is enough. Black soils are largely found in the Deccan, Deccan Plateau or the Deccan Basalt Trap region. It includes the states of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, parts of Telangana, northern part of Karnataka, parts of Gujarat, Tamil Nadu and they occupy about 5.46 lakh square kilometers in India. So what are the two soils we learnt? Alluvial, very important for agriculture. Crops, paddy, wheat, sugarcane. Then we learnt about regur or black soil, very important for cotton cultivation. We also learnt about the states in India, they are found. Now let's go to the third type of soil, the red soil. They are formed from the weathering of granite, knees, G is silent in the pronunciation of knees and other crystalline rocks. What are crystalline rocks? So I discussed with you all when a volcanic eruption happens, when the volcano comes out, when the magma comes out and the magma cools down, basalt rocks are formed. But the lava can also cool inside the earth. When it cools inside the earth, the rocks that are formed are called crystalline rocks. And when these rocks break down, we find red soil. The color of these soils is generally red or reddish brown. They are more sandy, that is they don't hold much moisture like black soil and less clay. So they do not retain moisture. They cover a vast area of again about 5.2 lakh kilometer square. From examination point of view, you need to know which rock is weathered for the formation of red soil, what is their color and it is more sandy and less clay. These soils are spread extensively in Tamil Nadu. They are also found in southern Karnataka. A quick review question, which soil was found in northern Karnataka? Black soil. Good. Parts of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Kerala, Goa, Bihar, UP, Assam, Manipur, Nagaland, West Bengal, etc. They are ideal for cultivation of ragi, one of the most important crops of Karnataka. 
millets, groundnuts, tobacco and potato. Just remember any three. A variety of crops can be grown in the soil if they are given adequate irrigation facilities. Next, let's learn about the fourth type of soil, laterite soil. They are formed in the tropical areas under the conditions of high temperature and rainfall. So, we see tropical region in India below the tropic of Cancer. You all learned this in the first chapter of Geography. What is the latitude of Tropic of Cancer? 23 and a half degree north. The region below that is tropical region. The region above that is temperate region. So, this soil, laterite soil requires high temperature, high rainfall. So, definitely we will see it in the tropical region of India itself. They cover an area of 2.48 km square. Where are they found? In the uplands of Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats, Chota Nagpur Plateau, Meghalaya Plateau, Rajmahal Hills, Vindhyas and the Satpuras. They are leached soils. They are not fertile and are limited for use of agriculture. So, in agriculture, they don't have a great level of usage. Crops like cashew, rubber, coffee and paddy can be grown. Students, you all may be thinking, what is the meaning of leached soils? Let us discuss. So, when rain comes and the soil cannot hold moisture and it goes, it just goes to the underground and along with that, it takes all the minerals and nutrition of the soil along with water when it's going to the underground. Such soils are called leached soils. Okay. Next, desert soil. Of course, the soil found in desert. Students, when we studied black soil, I told you all that they are very clay. Clay means they can hold a lot of moisture. They will be like clay, very moist when you hold it. The exact opposite of clay soil is sandy soil. It does not have capacity to hold water at all. Like if you take even 1 liter of water and pour, pour it on desert sand, it will go away fully. It has no capacity to hold water. So, the opposite of clay is sandy. So, desert soils are sandy soils. They are formed under desert and semi-desert like conditions. They are found in, of course, where is desert found in India? In northwest parts of India. A major part of Rajasthan, southern Haryana, Punjab and northern Gujarat. They are fairly friable, have a high content of soluble salt. They are sandy and they have very low moisture and very low humus. They are not suitable of cultivation of any crops. Some crops but can be grown if irrigation is available. They occupy about 1.42 lakh square kilometers. Now we come to the last type of soil, mountain soil. They are found on the slopes of mountains and hills covered by forests. They are formed due to the decomposition of organic matter. They are rich in humus. Why? Because a lot of organic matter dies and then the soil is formed. So, they are very rich in humus. Humus is nothing but dead and decayed matter of living organisms. It can be plants or animals. They are very fertile. They are useful for plantation crops like tea, coffee and fruits. Where are they found? Wherever mountains and hills are formed, that's where the soil is going to be found. Like in Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Manipur and along the western Ghats. They cover a area of 2.85 lakh square kilometers.